If you're not familiar with Yak, then this is the video for you. And even if you're already a Yak user, you still might learn a thing or two. Stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, today we're going to try to cover all of the basics of Yak and then a couple of maybe more advanced things depending on your skill level. But let's go ahead and jump into it because we do have a lot of information to cover today. I will leave timestamps down in the description below so you can jump to a specific section if that's all that interests you. So if this is your first time running Yak, when you open it up, this is what you're going to be presented with. It'll tell you that there's no ports configured and would you like help configuring Yak. I'm going to tell it no. We're going to be walking through a bit of a more advanced setup so I can walk you through several different things. And this will also allow us to make changes if we need to in the future. Now, the one thing I want to get going right out of the gate is I want to download some maps that we can use for this. You will need to know where you're at on this blank page, though, in order to download the maps for your area. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. I could go ahead and configure a GPS. That would put my position on the map. But I want to show you another method just in case you don't have GPS or will not be using it for your particular setup. Notice right down here in the bottom left corner, we get a lap long and a grid square. So if we move our uh, cursor around on the map, you'll see that down there in the bottom corner. Hopefully that's going to come through on camera. You'll see that that is moving around. So you may need to shift the map left or right to get it to your exact coordinates. Uh, also, if we go over to APRS.fi, if you come into your coordinates somewhere on the map here, notice right up there in the top right hand corner, it also gives you a Latin long. So if you're uh, not familiar with exact uh, exactly what your Latin long is, you can use that little cheat to figure out exactly where you are on the Yak map. Once you're there, I'm going to come up and I'm going to say File. I'm going to come down to Open Street Map and I'm going to download pre-imported tiles. That's going to pop up this window right here. Now, this is where you can also just plug in your Latin long if you don't want to kind of uh, figure out exactly where you are on that blank screen. And then we want to set the radius in kilometers that we want to download. So I'm going to probably give it, uh, let's say, 300 kilometers this morning. That should be enough for this demonstration. And then just go ahead and click OK. You will see uh, you get this pop-up box that is telling you it is starting to download that data. Once it finishes uh, downloading everything, the map will auto-load for you. And now you can see that we have the entire state of Tennessee pretty much downloaded here. Now, every time you move this map, it is going to have to redraw, and that does take it a couple of seconds a couple of seconds more on slower systems. But now we've got a map that we can work with. One other quick thing, while we're on the topic of maps, you can create bookmarks for a particular map view. So if uh, we like this map view right here, I'm going to come up to bookmarks and choose bookmark this view. It's going to ask for a name. We'll just call this one Tennessee and say OK. Now at any point in time, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit to some, uh, let's see, I believe that was Murfreesboro right here in the center. Yep, there we go. Uh, so now that I have this, I could create a new bookmark. Uh, so I'll say bookmark and we'll just call this one Murfreesboro and say OK. Now at any point in time, if I want to jump back to that previous view, I can just go up to the bookmarks and choose that bookmark that I've already set. So the next thing I want to do is I do want to go ahead and import my GPS data, get all of that set up and ready to come into Yak. So I'm going to go up to File, Configure, and Expert Mode. This is a spot we will be using quite a bit, so get that memorized exactly where we're going to find that data. Once we're in here, I'm going to come up to Ports. The first thing we need to do is tell Yak about the GPS, and we do that 
by utilizing the ports. So once we're on that ports tab, let's go ahead and click add. I'm going to use the drop down box right here to come down to GPSD. I already have the GPS configured for this particular laptop and it is running with the GPSD service. So we can just go ahead and choose that. We'll leave all of this at default and click save. And now you'll see that we have this port one defined. It's the GPSD and there's a check mark right here telling Yak to enable that service. Now, if by chance this is in red, then you have some sort of an issue with your GPSD. You'll need to uh, get that sorted out before you come back in and try to re-enable this port. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and configure an APRS IS port. This is going to be for putting data out on the internet into the APRS internet services. And it will allow us to get data out of the APRS IS system and display it on our map. Now, you may or may not want to use the internet. Each of these, I'm just showing you how to do. You, as the operator, have to decide which parts of these you need. Again, I'm going to come down to this Add button. I'll go ahead and click on that. This time for the port type, we'll use the drop down and we're going to choose APRS IS. Once that comes up, we need to choose our host name. Now, choose this depending on which continent you're on. I'm going to use North America right here. For my call sign, we'll go ahead and put that in. And then you also need to know your passcode. If you're not familiar with your passcode, you can come over to this page right here. And guys, I will leave a link to this down in the description below. But it's just an APRS passcode generator. And honestly, if you type that into Google, those three words, it'll bring you right to this page as the first search result. Uh, key in my call sign and click get the passcode. And there is my passcode. Now, don't use mine. It's specific to each operator's call sign. This really isn't a big secret, though. It's just a way to kind of cut down traffic going into the APRS IS system for those who might not have a call sign or not be a ham radio operator. Now, before we leave this page, you will need to decide if you want to enable or disable transmit here. I'm going to go ahead and enable this today just for this video. You may or may not choose to do that. Now, let's go ahead and click save here, and that will give us our second port up here, which is APRS-IS. Next up, let's go ahead and configure this to talk to the radio. Now, there's multiple different ways to do this. I've actually done a video in the past that shows how to use Yak with a MobiLink TNC so that you don't need to run Direwolf. You can just run the MobiLink and an HT. Today, we're going to be using Direwolf to do this. Now, I'm not going to go into how to set up Direwolf itself. That's kind of beyond the scope of this video. All I want to do is start Direwolf here and then show you how to get Yak to talk to Direwolf. So we'll start Direwolf in the terminal window here. That looks good. And now we can go back into Yak and create our new port. Again, we're going to come down to the Add button. This time in the port type uh, dropdown, we're going to choose AGWPE and we should be able to leave all of this at default. Uh, Localhost just says it's running on this particular machine that I'm working with right now. The port is a standard port that's used by Direwolf, so unless you've changed it in Direwolf, you can leave that as default. Make sure your call sign is right here, and then the one change we do need to make is we would want to enable transmit using Direwolf. That would send stuff out over RF. Once you've made that one change, we'll just go ahead and click Save. And you'll see that we get port number three now, which is an AGWPE port, and it's using our first sound card. Now, one other thing that you might want to do inside of your configure window is you might want to create a beacon for your station. So I'm going to come over to the Beacon tab. On the Beacon tab, I'm going to choose Use GPS for Position. Now, if you didn't have a GPS uh, connected to your particular setup, 
you could go ahead and manually enter the lat and long that you want to use for your position. Since I have the GPS, I'm just going to go ahead and choose Use GPS for Position. Next up, we need to choose a display symbol for this particular station. In my case, I'm going to use the laptop. And then you can change your comment that shows up on APRS.fi by altering this information right here in the free text window. I'm just going to leave mine at YAC right now for this particular demonstration. Once you've got everything set up, just click on Enable Station Beacon. Ah, and one thing I forgot to do in this configure when we were configuring the beacon is I forgot the all-important step. Well, hey, I need to enable that again, and then click Save Changes. I seem to miss that step every single time I do this, and I'm trying to figure out why it won't beacon. All right, now we should be good to go. So now you should have data coming into the map, and we should also see our location right here. Let's go ahead and click the beacon button one time, and let's go check uh, APRS.fi and make sure we are being heard. Coming over to APRS.fi, you'll see my station showing up right there. So I'm going to click on that one, and you'll see that uh, status message or comment that we left showing up right there. So we are getting out to APRS.fi. Now, if you want to send a message, come down to this bottom bar right here, and you're just going to type in the address that you want to send the message to. In this case, we'll be sending it to my HT. So let's just put a message over there. We'll put a uh, test for video because I'm uh, super creative this morning. And let's see, I'm going to hold this here so maybe we can see it while I click the send button from Yak. So we should see that pop up here in just a second on our radio. And there it is. There's the message that just came through for us. So messages are working. Now, if you want to see a station list, you can come up here to where it says view, and we can come down to station and object list. Notice, though, it also has this control S out there beside it. That is a shortcut. So if I just press control S on the keyboard, we're going to get a station list to pop up. Now, I just clicked on the distance column right here so that I could sort those uh, stations that are coming in by distance. If we wanted to see any one of those, we can simply come over to the name of it and double click. Yak will give you these little green arrows that point to exactly where that object is located on the map. Next, let's take a look at creating an object that we could put out to everyone else in the area, both over uh, the internet and over RF. So right back here, I'm just going to right click and say create an object. And it will use let me move this out of the way for a second. It will use wherever the cursor is for the lat and long. So wherever you put the cursor and right click is the lat and long that it's going to pull in. Now, I'm going to put this out as a test. Uh, I tell you what, let's make that video hyphen test. I believe all of that will fit. Well, almost. So if I take out the hyphen, uh, we should be able to get video test in there. Uh, and you've only got a certain amount of characters here that we can use. Now, it's already pulled in the Latin long. We do need to give it a symbol. Uh, so let's find something that we can use here for this test. We'll just go with the red dot right there. And then you need to choose how you want this object sent out. If we choose private, it will only show up on our map. If we choose local, it will only go out over RF. If we choose global, then it will go out over RF and be gated to the internet. So I'm going to leave this set as global. And down here in the comment, we'll just put test object for video. And that should be all we need to do. If we go ahead and click OK right here, you will see that video test show up right there where I had the cursor when I right clicked. 
Now, let's go double check APRS.FI and make sure it showed up there as well. And taking a look at APRS.FI, you will see that video test object that I just created. If we click on that, in the green right here is the comment that I put on that object when I created it. Now, let's go back to Yak for a second because we can right-click on that object and then just hit Delete Station or Object. Now, it won't immediately drop off of APRS.FI. It'll take it 10 or 15 minutes before that disappears. So if we go back over here, you're still going to see that video test object that we just created. But after about 10 or 15 minutes, that will disappear from APRS.FI as well. I hope you found today's information helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.